We're gonna we're gonna talk with Ben Martin. Uh, so, if if as a as one of our listeners, if you've ever thought about or wondered about what goes on beyond the behind the scenes at a at a NOC or a SOC, uh, an operations center, uh, that's what we're gonna dig into today with with Ben. Uh, ben is the vice president of managed services for InterVision. So. We were talking with Vicki about the professional services and the implementation. Ben's the guy that takes over and keeps things running on the managed services side. So Ben, uh, welcome to the 2023 Strategy Summit. Um, would love to uh, have you share just a little bit about your background and about your role at InterVision. Uh, and then as you might imagine, I have a bunch of questions for you. Sure, uh, thank you for uh, the time today. Um, a little bit about myself. So uh, I've been, been with InterVision for uh, a little over seven years now. Um, I uh, have um, uh, a fair amount of time in the operations center space. Uh, I grew up in operations from a professional perspective. My first uh, job out of uh, college was uh, working on the help desk and um, uh, kind of progressed through uh, a, another company uh, and a larger uh, MSP. So uh, kind of grew through the ranks of um, operator, engineer, you know, frontline manager, um, uh, up and through um, leadership positions, managing mostly technical resources um, and uh, focused a lot of time on uh, professionally around process development, um, organizational development, um, and uh, 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 earned my uh, MBA at Washington University um, along the way uh, um, about uh, uh, 10 years ago uh, this year. 10 years ago, it seems like yesterday, I bet. Yeah, yeah it does, <laughs> some days, some days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Ben, with your responsibility and the and the general theme of this conversation today is is keeping the lights on. What are your areas of responsibility with the Intervision? Uh, so, my team is responsible for I think core uh, four core functions inside of Intervision. Um, uh, we own the onboarding of managed services. So, when Vicky talks about um, a warm handoff or warm transfer to uh to the managed services team we own that onboarding element um, for services coming out of an implementation for example or if we're taking over a brownfield environment you know we're, we're onboarding that environment into our systems and tools um, and then our operation center is the other area uh, of my responsibility they're the team that's uh, um, responding to events or alerts generated by our systems and tools answering phone calls from customers, uh, responding to web tickets. You know, they're the proactive and reactive side of the managed services business. Um, I also have responsibility for our hosted engineering team. Um, they're, uh, they're responsible for keeping our two data centers uh, up to date and, uh, and always on. Um, and then uh, finally, um, but certainly not last, is our uh, IT um, compliance and security team. So uh, internal IT for InterVision, as well as information security and compliance for both our services, systems, and tools. That's a lot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a lot. So, one of the one of the reasons that that companies uh, come to InterVision, uh, a managed service provider, is is the help with keeping the lights on, right? Those, those things that uh, are the, the, the vitally important tasks to keeping things going, but um, sometimes are the more routine, sure. right? To, you've got to check in on this. So talk to us a little bit about how your team focuses on those tasks for our, for our customers. So. What things are they doing? You, you mentioned, uh, and I jotted it down, proactive and reactive. So what, what does that look like from a, from a resource perspective in your, in your group? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, you know, our, our organization is uh, segmented uh, along our um, product lines of business, our centers of excellence. Um, I, I think we've mentioned a couple times in the last two days, but 
Um, we, you know, I have a, a, a team of collaboration and communication engineers, a team of security engineers, a team of cloud and hosting engineers, and um, and then uh, and then network engineers. Those those resources, those individuals are um, are are doing a, a, a host of many things, um, whether it be responding to alerts that are generated by um, our proactive tools that we have watching customer environments um, or uh, answering phone calls or web tickets for uh, either changes, requests, or maybe maybe it's an incident that wasn't identified proactively. Um, they're triaging and then um, working through that. So, um, you know, when it comes to uh, what what they're doing, it's 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 a lot of uh, of managing between uh, changes, requests, incidents of varying priorities, right? Priority one, priority two, you know, maybe a low priority event that we don't want to turn into a high priority priority event. So, um, you know, uh, it, it's 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 simple to say that it's react proactive support, but complex behind the scenes of how you can get to everything in a timely manner. Um, Vicky mentioned, you know, SLAs being paramount to, you know, the the services that we deliver. So you have to deliver SLAs across all priorities. It's not just, you know, dealing with the fires, you know, in a in a quick manner, but making sure that a, a change request is done in a timely manner or a priority three is handled um, so that it doesn't become a problem down the road. So um, there's a there's a lot that we've built into our systems and tools to help the team manage that. And I think that's some of what you get when you come to a, uh, a mature managed services organization is that process excellence, that, that tool development, that automation that happens behind the scenes um, to ensure that uh, no matter what is coming in, uh, that it will be handled in a, uh, a timely manner with quality, right? The other, the other half of that coin of SLA is, sure, can I do it quickly, but do I do it well? And so we're constantly balancing um, our service level objectives with uh, client satisfaction. Yeah, and that's got to be a that's got to be a tough thing to balance uh, at 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 some point. And one of the things that that Vicky em emphasized at that stage of a relationship was communication. How do you how does your team, first of all, how does your team communicate with our clients and how do you coach them in communication? So kind of a two part question. Sure. Um, I think uh, a lot of what Vicky said around um, uh, talent acquisition is uh, not just a her team sort of thing, right? It's an intervision sort of thing. We're finding people that are passionate, um, that are uh, that want to talk about technology. Um, I can teach someone, you know, the in and outs of a checkpoint firewall, but having someone feel comfortable getting on a call, not knowing all of the information and willing to kind of tease that information out during, you know, kind of what could be a chaotic event is, you know, a unique skill set. So um, finding finding individuals that are comfortable under duress, you know, or under stress and um, and thrive in that sort of environment. Right. So. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm the kind of person where if it's slow, I I I am I am less effective, right? I I want to be busy, and we look for people that are that are like that as well. Um, as far as uh, as far as far as how we um, how we communicate with customers, we have several different vehicles. Um, obviously, you know, if there's a priority event that's occurring, our engineers should be picking up the phone and letting them know what's going on, right? And say, hey, you know. Mr. And Mrs. Customer, your your environment's down. We're these are the things that we're working on. These are the next steps, and here's what I'm going to update you next, right? Yeah. Um, and then we enable uh, customers to view status of our tickets on the portal. So you know if they're you know our job is to be an extension of a of a client environments, and so if they're off doing the things that are paramount to their business, you know not getting phone calls every hour because you know they know that we've got it. If they can go in and check on the status of of a ticket on the portal so that they can just kind of keep a pulse of it, but still be doing what their core function is, right? Whether it's finance, banking, healthcare. Um, our goal is to help enable them to see the status as it progresses and keep them in the loop uh, along the way. 
I, I love the, the, what you said there about uh, you, you look for people who are, first of all, comfortable with being under stress because it is an incredibly stressful position to be in. Uh, because as, as we all know, um, IT gets much more attention when things aren't working uh, than, when, than when they do. But the other part that you mentioned was, was uh, being comfortable getting on a call when you don't have all the answers, when you don't have all the information. Uh, sure. Because I, I've, I've run into IT professionals, and heck, I, I was one, that you spend all your time gathering information because you want to have all the answers before you get on there. That. That's right. Uh, I, I thought both of those were, were great points. So when you're thinking about um, a, a single customer shop, uh, and um, many of our listeners can put themselves in, in the shoes and know everything that goes on in keeping the lights on, it's a, it's a mountain of work. Well, you take that and you expand it beyond one client to dozens of clients, how do you uh, manage this mountain of work uh, that has to be done every day, 24 by seven? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, I think it comes down to having repeatable processes um, and, uh, and, and good documentation, right? So um, there's kind of two elements to our managed service offerings. One is staying within our lanes of the things that we're good at to ensure that we can um, drive repeatable success in the technologies that we're familiar with. Um, and then when we deviate from that, supplementing it with either like a, a subject matter expert, a client service delivery manager, or a client service engineer that can kind of help connect the dots on the things that maybe are not standard. Um, and, uh, and that really helps pollinate knowledge of uh, customer environments throughout the whole team. Um, we have a, a very rich database inside of ServiceNow that has the you know customer assets, um, inventory. Um, and so for the most part, we should be responding to many of those things in the same way. But during an onboarding of a client environment, you know, we'll walk through their their technology stack and you know make sure that you know the things that are important to them are connected in our system in an important way, right? So some a, a database server in their environment may be critical, but you know there might be a a, a a server farm that's got like ten web heads that maybe they don't need to be called in the middle of the night, right? Yeah. And so making sure that uh, we onboard their environment and are responding the way that they would expect us to, as if we were down the hall versus across the street or maybe across the country, that's really important. You know, um, I said earlier that you know our goal is to be an extension of their organization, and the only way to do that is to learn and set expectations early so that we can respond the way that they're looking for. That almost seems like a, a paradox, right? We want repeatable processes. We want to be able to do things the same way all the time. We also want to respond to the customer the way they want and need us to respond. How do you balance that paradox? I, I mean, it's to be clear, it's a constant balance, right? Between being too rigid versus being, you know, overly flexible. I think, you know, we try and strike a happy medium um, of what's realistic and have honest conversations with our customers around what we can and can't achieve both for them and then on a broader scale. Um, most customers, you know, they don't want to be treated differently, right? They like, well, what do you do for everybody else, right? Is a common question that comes up because they know that standard um, solutions breed consistent experience. And so, um, and so really what we're trying to do is, is find ways that we can augment or supplement that service, you know, with uh, little to, to, to few variations and deliver the best possible solution, you know, that, uh, that we can achieve. I, I, I love that. That's got to that that has to be a challenge uh, for you and for your team. What are some of the other challenges that uh, face your department uh, because of the work that you're assuming for our clients? I mean, I think we see challenges around um, keeping pace with uh, uh, ever changing technology stacks. You know, um, you've got. Um, uh, you know, new technologies coming down the pike every day, 
um, another another thing that um, you know that we look for in our employees is they have to be um, they have to have a desire to learn and grow, right? And the great part about Intervision from an employee standpoint is we can expose engineers to a ton of different technologies. Yeah. They are they aren't working in a single shop that's just Juniper, right? And they don't ever touch a Meraki device or they or they'll never see a Palo Alto device because they made a decision to go kind of vertical on the Juniper stack. Our engineers have access to a ton of different technologies. It's a challenge to keep up with it, but I think it's also something that um, helps keep us fresh from from an employee standpoint. Um, and and I think then the the other the other thing is is the unknown, right? Like you said, uh, our environment our environment um, is uh, it, it, we we handle stuff that is on fire or breaks, and so it's just being able to uh, quickly adapt and swivel uh, to those needs um, with grace. No way am I uh, am I trivializing our our first responders uh, out there, but it's like being a first responder, right? You're heading you're heading head first into something that's broken, uh, trying yeah. to figure that out. I, I I I use this analogy with my team a lot. You know, it's like working at the lost and found at the airport, right? Everyone that comes up comes up to your desk is going to have a problem that you have to solve, and they're going to be unhappy. You know, and you have to be okay in that environment and expect expect that, <laughs> and then and then find a way to 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 to, to solve the problem. So, um, yeah, it's definitely uh, it, it's it's definitely um, it, it can be it can be challenging at times. But we have the you know our team is 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 excellent at uh, at navigating that. Uh, I I I love that picture of the lost and found at the airport. I I I just was on a, a trip from hell last week and. Uh, I can imagine the being in the the shoes of the person behind the desk when the flight got canceled last oh, week. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, a uh, tough place to be. Well, one of the other things that you touched on uh, a little bit, I'd like to dig a little bit deeper into, uh, is legacy versus emerging. Mm -hmm. Right, technicians love to play with the the new technology, but we've got a lot of customers who we are they're keeping the lights on while they go maybe migrate to the cloud or try AI or whatever that new, how, how do you balance that with your team and with the, the various customers that we have? I think, uh, I think the legacy builds the foundation for our service offerings, um, whether it be, you know, managing a wide area network MPLS solution or, you know, a, a large, um, uh, disaster recovery or, or server farm, right? That's, that's kind of the, the table stakes for what we do. And then, you know, it's it's been really incredible following customers along this journey of uh, of um, uh, technology innovation and um, and watching, you know, and helping customers move from like an, a legacy MPLS network to a next generation SD-WAN solution, right? Yeah. And seeing all the benefits and value, both from a customer standpoint um, as well as from an engineering standpoint, you know, we've watched customers who have a, a, a large voice presence on a maybe an older managed network environment, and as they move to SD WAN, seeing the benefits of of a uh, of a solution like that, not only to the network but also to like the quality of voice and quality of service that they're getting. So it's you know it's uh, it's great because. Um, it's not like it's not a big bang approach where like the next day you've got all of this new technology. It's definitely um, a, an evolution and a transformation. So when you talk about digital transformation, we're part of that journey. Yeah. Well, and 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 that kind of leads us into the I'll call it the other half of your job, although I'm not sure that it that it's divided up that evenly. But uh, product development, yep. you participate in a lot of ways on it. Talk to us a little bit about the way that you uh, almost become, in a lot of ways, the voice of the customer. Absolutely. I mean, my team interacts with our customers probably more than anybody at Intervision, right? Between ticket interactions, um, uh, experiences, both in a um, monthly business review or quarterly business review. You know, we have a lot of different touch points that we have exposure to what's working and what's not working. Um, uh, Almost all of my uh, my leaders in, in inside of uh, managed services are part of those uh, 
centers of excellence, you know, the product, um, you know, uh, solution uh, meetings that we have on a uh, sometimes weekly or biweekly basis, depending on the meeting. So they're, they are the, the voice of the customer. They are providing that feedback. They're providing the what if or, you know, constantly looking at ways to um, automate or innovate our solutions, whether it be to uh, enable better self-service or reduce the level of effort um, from a engineering cycle level of effort perspective to find ways to do uh, what we do every day more intelligently, you know, at a lower cost. Do you help fill the, I, I guess, the function gaps? In, in other words, uh, as, as you all are working and keeping the lights on with our clients, you will identify maybe some gaps in the way our services connect sure. uh, or maybe don't fill all those. How do you bring those to the table and, and advocate uh, for those? I think we, we do it in several ways. Obviously, you know, um, you know, if my team is engaged in something and they see an opportunity that uh, would be beneficial for a client, we'll either talk directly to the customer or bring maybe their account manager along to say, Hey, we had this experience. We really think that they would, you know, this customer would benefit from X service or X solution, right? Or oftentimes a lot of uh, customers will buy one service from us and it'll be going well and it'll be, well, it would be nice if you could do this. I'm like, well, we can, but you, you require, you know, maybe, you know, um, a, a help desk solution offering or, or maybe you need uh, one of our security so solutions that provide, you know, some of the vulnerability scanning or things like that, that, mm -hmm. you know, um, they don't realize as, as gaps, you know, when, when they're engaging with us early on, but as the, uh, as our relationship matures, we definitely see opportunities for, um, for needs inside of their business. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I, and I like that because sometimes the, the gap is that they don't have all the services they need. I, I, yeah. I, I and so you're you're kind of working both sides of that, right? You're working with the client to say, "Hey, maybe you need this service." Uh, and then on the on I'll call it the intervision side, you're you're talking about, "Hey, we need to add this in to that to that offering." And uh, I love that. So so Ben, I'm going to ask you a, a question I asked Vicky, uh, and I think you'd already joined, uh, so you probably heard this, but you know sometimes I know it's hard for our listeners to believe. Sometimes things go wrong. What do you do when uh, things hit the proverbial fan? Um, well, I, I would say um, in my world, that's more often, right? <laughs> uh, maybe than Vicky's, uh, that something goes wrong. Um, I think there's a couple things that we uh, that we do. If it's a major event, we try and get all of the key stakeholders on a call together so that we're working together. Oftentimes, you know, I'm managing 80% of a customer's environment, maybe 50% of the customer's environment, and they have, you know, keys to other pieces of it. Um, but even if we're, if we're responsible for 100% of it, there's still stakeholders on the client side that need to be engaged that need to be aware right so i think i think you know um communication is key um to uh to ensuring um that uh crises are dealt um uh properly when, when i talk about process you know my team is a as a idle um you know certified group of of uh leaders and and individuals and so we follow a lot of some of those key principles between incident management, change management, release management. But one function that we have inside the uh, organization is crisis management, where we will assign a crisis manager to a scenario um, who will streamline communication um, both internally and externally. Um, and it really just kind of puts, gives that individual, you know, the, the hat to say, okay, this is your responsibility during this event. Um, I think Vicky mentioned, you know, that uh, there is the ability to escalate. We built in our ticketing in, in our ticketing system and in our portal the ability to escalate to a duty manager, and it's kind of a cool concept because uh, you can, when you have a ticket raised within the, our organization, you can create it creates kind of an individual thread that goes between you and the duty manager, oh. so you can kind of keep that communication separate from the engineers who are working to solve a problem. Um, so a leader could come in from a, a customer environment, escalate to a duty manager, and then interact, you know, virtually with that duty manager 
while the engineering resources are still working, kind of solve the problem. Yeah. Well, and and I, I think again, falling back on that communication is 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 king. And and uh, for our uh, attendees, I'm gonna I'm gonna toot Ben's horn a little bit because he will not do that. I've I've been on some of those calls and in some of those meetings where we're we're having to get some things back on track again and. I am telling you, there is there was there is no one you would rather have uh, as your advocate uh, in those situations than Ben. He is uh, cool under pressure. Uh, he thrives in that in environment. Um, and uh, you know, when when all else has got their hair on fire, Ben's there trying to keep things calm. So kudos to you on that. Thanks. Time for one last question, Ben. Yeah. Uh, crystal ball time. Uh, what's the future in the world of op center management? Where is it going? Where do you see that heading? I, I think we're driving towards more self service and automation. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, we're looking at ways to improve the uh, the client experience, whether it be exposing more information on the portal. Um, we just entered a partnership with uh, some uh, power verification automation this year, which is pretty cool. So we can uh, automatically determine if a location has utility power or not without having to call the site and ask, you know, hey, are your lights on? You know, while we're troubleshooting a network event, yeah, you know, yeah. so, um, uh, so, you know, we're looking at uh, we're looking at more and more ways to um, uh, enrich the uh, the client experience through uh, self service and automation. That's a, a big focus for us this year, and I don't see that focus dying off anytime soon. Where do you see AI come into play? Are you are you looking at uh, AI ops and that kind of technology? I mean, I think we're uh, we're watching it evolve. You know, um, uh, we're we're seeing kind of how Chat GPT is being leveraged um, in the industry. Um, I'm seeing some benefits of it from a uh, from a survey perspective. You know, we send um, a net promoter score surveys out and client satisfaction transactional surveys out. I'm seeing some value in kind of um, keeping that language fresh and and kind of uh, help it rise to the top for uh, for our clients, you know, and, and a, a shameless plug here for the for uh, anybody that is a customer of ours today. You know, um, we 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 treat uh, net promoter score and client transactional surveys um, very seriously here. So we encourage you to to give us feedback and um, uh, if there's whether it's good or bad, right? We 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 want we want all all sorts of feedback and those 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 uh, comments and uh, 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 responses that we get turn into actionable results, whether it be us evaluating process, people, or tools. Um, so uh, please, uh, if you see something come through. Uh, uh, I, I'm terrible at sending, you know, survey responses like at Starbucks, like, you know, I get this long receipt with something at the bottom and I never do it. Um, <laughs> this is, this is different, right? This is, this is your house. This is your home that we're, keep, you know, we're keeping safe and secure. So definitely give us feedback. We would, uh, we appreciate it. Well, and, and, and one last thing that, that I'm going to, I know I lied and said, I had one, only one last question for you, but. One of the things that, that really strikes me about you, Ben, and, and your career is you started out on the help desk, and so many IT professionals start there, but they they move out uh, to do to other things. You have stayed. Um, so why do you do what you do? <laughs> oh, I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, <laughs> no. Uh... Um, I, I you know I uh, it's funny when I was when I was in, uh, when I was getting my um, bachelor's in computer management information systems people would always ask me what are you what are you gonna do with that and I didn't I didn't know right I was like I want to be a network administrator you know that was my goal and the truth is is I love solving problems I love helping people um, I really enjoy you know process development organizational development I love coaching and mentoring um, but, you know, you know, in, in the end, it comes down to solving problems. I'm a, I'm a fixer, you know, mm -hmm. at, at home, at work, you know, um, so uh, I get frustrated when there's problems I can't fix. So, you know, I think that's what's kept me in this role as long as I, I am is because I really just enjoy uh, I enjoy uh, uh, what we do and what the team does um, every day. Well, Ben, I, I got to tell you, you do it very well. You've got a great, great team. 
Um, and I, I appreciate you taking time to, to talk with our attendees today and be a part of the strategy summit here in uh, the spring of 2023. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.